Bonjour, this is Jasmine. Thank you so much for stopping to smell the roses on you, madame. For those of you who are new to my channel, I am a writer, a storyteller, and a community builder. And today we're talking about allyship, where I'm going to bring on friends and associates that are very vocal online about their support of the Black Lives Matter movement and social justice. And they're gonna talk about what allyship means to them. So please stick around and enjoy. This is zone two. Oh, How man. are you? I'm okay. How you doing? You know, things could always be better. Yeah. And you actually went to one of the protests. Yes. Yeah, I went on Saturday night. And then I was checking things out on Friday night, too, but I had to work Saturday, so I left early. Okay. How was it? Was it, you said it was peaceful? Uh, honestly, yes. Like, from what I saw, and then when I got home Friday, like, I was watching, um, Fox was covering it live, so I was watching that on TV, but then there was a reporter from the Detroit Free Press, and I was watching her live feed on it, and she was actually, like, in with the protesters okay. and from what i observed from like her videos and then from what i observed observed firsthand the police are honestly like a militia group i mean really? they they were like saturday when i was there we marched down jefferson onto 75 like, but then we marched and did a big circle and came back down to, like, pretty much in front of Hart Plaza. Okay. And we rallied there and gathered, and we were just talking. We did a moment of silence where everybody got down on a knee. And in the moment of silence, I mean, you see the police essentially, like, um, surrounding us. Wow. I yes. feel like this is, like... A scene from a movie or something. It's like and that's, and, that, and that's exactly what I thought. And that's why I had to go and like see it for myself because Saturday I was down there till like midnight. Oh. So like I wanted to like see firsthand like what's going on, you know? And I mean I brought like goggles, you know, just in case, like, you know, big work goggles, because you just don't know what's gonna happen. But I hear <laughs> a lot of different stories of it actually getting violent and people destroying property in downtown Detroit and people like saying oh what did you see any of that I've heard like I haven't seen any destruction of property in downtown I've seen destruction of property like in Grand Rapids oh. like yeah they did a lot of destruction of property in Grand Rapids the police have been very aggressive like in downtown Detroit so there hasn't been any, like, destruction. But I personally feel like the destruction comes when, when the police provoke it, in okay. a sense. I mean, they, like, from what I saw, like, when they were, you know, surrounding us, that's when we have to start with the marching, is okay. because we can't allow them to box us in, because, like, from Friday night, what I was watching, I mean, the police were pepper spraying, like, uh, people from the media, like, wow. reporters. I mean, the police are very, like, and it's not all cops, but there's a lot of aggressiveness. I mean, there's But I just feel like if one cop or a dozen cops are aggressive, the other cops may not be aggressive, and they may be very good, but they're not doing anything to stop the other cops from escalating things. Yes, yes. And what gets seen is, unfortunately, the mistake of one gets, you know, overshadowed by the good of a dozen, you know, right. like, and that's the sad part. And, mm -hmm. I mean, they try to break up the peaceful protest, like, you know, they surround and then they want to break up the protest, and then that's when they start inflicting, like, the tear gas and the mace to break up the protests. I mean, they want to take away our rights to peacefully yeah. protest. I mean, it's, 
it, it's a little ridiculous what I saw. How many of how many protesters were there, more or less? Was it like I mean, hundreds? There was, yeah, there was a good, like, probably close to a thousand, I wow. would say. Wow. I mean, it was hard. Like, did you see the videos I posted? Yeah. Did you watch those? So, like, those were, like, a good majority of the protesters. But then, you know, it's kind of, like, hard to see when you're marching. And then I was, like, trying to get, you know, a good video. But mm -hmm. then I also wasn't there to, like... I was there to like, you know, march on and like my throat was so sore the next day. And, you know, I was just like, I was in it. Yeah, I was talking to a friend from LA and she said exactly what she, you said. She went to the protest and it was peaceful and she left. And other protesters said once the police came, everything, all the chaos started. Yes. Um, and then violence started. And, mm -hmm. um, that's really sad. Yeah, it is. It's so sad because they're supposed to protect us. And I mean, we've all been, you know, being Arab and I'm gay, like, you know, this is just like, I've been stereotyped so many times throughout my life. So I'll never know what it's like to be a black man, but I know what it's like to be stereotyped. I mean, right. I lived in a small town in New Jersey when 9-11 happened, a oh small God. Irish town. I remember somebody the day after looking at me and saying it was my fault. Wow. And I was in seventh grade. And that stuff like, sticks with you all of your life. Forever. It sticks with you forever. And oh, that, daily, that daily constant um, attack and those microaggressions really stick with you. Oh, yeah. I mean, and this was someone I grew up with, you know. You grew up. Yeah, since kindergarten, like, you know, not like a good friend, but, you know, somebody who we've been in classes together since kindergarten. I thought this was like, a stranger. That <laughs> yeah, no, this is somebody who was at, I was at school with, like, since kindergarten, you know, so it's like, literally racism is everywhere. And it's, you know, it is, it's taught by our parents and grandparents and, you know, right. their parents before. And if we don't start by breaking the wheel now, it's going to keep rolling. But what do you think, like, pushed the, like, what was the last straw? Because George Floyd was just after Breonna Taylor and then just after Ahmaud Arbery. Like, what made this, like, the moment where everybody's, like, in the street? Do you think it was the video and how, like, messed up it was? I, I think it was the multiple videos showing the you know the wrongful death i mean that was a murder yeah and you know i mean it was like how could somebody be so heartless the evidence is clear right in front of us but yet nobody wants to you know make an allegation i mean i've seen these right a right-wing republicans on tv saying they want to have all the facts straight what facts? We have video in front of us. This man has his hand in his pocket with no regard to right. his life. Right, right, right. I mean, it's like the facts are in front of us. I mean, you guys have convicted people of race for less. Right, right. Did you, uh, do you have people on your timeline that also thinks like this? Like Republican friends or right wing friends that you like? I have had people who I've clashed with, and it's like, it's more, honestly, it's those people who I grew up with in New Jersey, like oh, that wow. small town that I came from. I was, I'm friends with a lot of those people, like Facebook, you know, I stay friends with them because it's like, I don't get to see them all the time, but we grew up with them and everything's been cool. And then since Trump came into office, um, it's been a decline and it's, you know, I'll post something and they're the ones who comment on it with like negativity. And then I say something and like, they start with the backlash and the, you know, insinuations and it starts with the hate, but right. 
it comes with, you know, like they have that superior, like they know everything kind of, you know, mentality. Yeah. Um, are you a political person in general or are you really? I never was until the <laughs> until last now, like, right? two years. Yeah. And I mean, I guess that's kind of how it goes, though, in a sense. Like when I was younger, I was like, you don't talk about politics. You don't talk about religion. Like. Right. You know, we've all, we're like, we're all one race. I mean, it's, you know, we bleed, it's red. And that's all there is to it. And yeah. you know me, I've always been, like, pro everyone. You know, <laughs> right. I've been friends with everybody. Like, I've never, and the weirdest thing, too, is growing up in that small town, our next door neighbors were black. They were the only black family in town. And it wasn't until I moved to Michigan that I realized they were black wow i'm telling you race was never because we were the only arabs okay. in the town so we grew up with like knowing about like the culture and stuff but then also knowing my mom is american so like we were we were raised with like the mixed cultures and then like with them next door i used to play with his daughter every single day in the backyard like it, well, why it, was it until you came to Michigan that it dawned on you? What was so? It was, was Michigan? seeing all the just the divide here. Oh, okay. Is, there is so much divide here in Michigan. It's so sad. I think it's more, um, or maybe it's Michigan, but Metro Detroit is known for their segregated Areas. suburbs. Yeah. Yes. And it, it really is. And I, like, I see it firsthand and it's, it really is sad because it's like, it shouldn't be that way. I mean, I came as like an outsider and I, I saw it right away. I mean, even at school, it was like, there were the little clicks and stuff. And personally, my first day of school, I sat with the black kids at lunch because that's who I felt comfortable with. Right, right. I mean, and it was, it wasn't like I never looked at color. It was just who like I was comfortable with. But I think if you are a part of a minority group, you see minorities faster or you can click faster, I think. And when you're in the yes. dominant group, it's probably the opposite. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, and it's just it's such a shame to like see the world in this day and age when it's like we feel like we've advanced so far, like technologically yeah. and even intellectually, but yet we're still experiencing all of this race and, you know, all of these racial issues and this hatred. And it's like, when will it end? When will it truly end? I don't, probably not in our lifetimes, unfortunately. But no. I have a question like in New Jersey, it wasn't as separate. It wasn't, and it was, I mean, in New Jersey, like, what I experienced and I lived, it was a lot more of, like, a Latino population. Okay. And there were, you know, Blacks, and there were, and they did live, you know, in their, like, in their different areas, but it was never, like, we never looked at it as race and stuff. I mean, we literally all hung out together, and it was more of, like, just, us being hoodlums running the streets like <laughs> you know and having fun and like being kids in a sense like yeah. it was never you know and it was a different time I mean that was close to like 20 years ago right, so right. it's like it was completely a different time but it's like that was a small town and you know I guess being in like a bigger city you do see like the racial differences yeah and Detroit is still like recovering from the racial riots you know in the 60s and like and it's sad how history is repeating itself and it's like oh, absolutely. in 10 years in 15 years in 20 years what is the, I mean it's gonna be the same thing yeah um, yeah like if we don't stand up and do something now history will keep repeating itself and, you know, these white supremacy groups, like, it's disgusting. I mean, last year at the Pride in downtown Detroit, mm -hmm. there were white supremacy groups with Nazi um, flags and semi-automatic guns and things marching. I saw that on your, on your and, they, and yeah. they were protected by the police. Yes, yes. I remember I might still have videos saved on my phone, but it was absolutely disgusting. And... I mean, like, knots in my stomach. 
and yeah. seeing these people marching and just the police were around them protecting them mm-hmm. and then because they have a right to peaceful protests and freedom but of yet speech we and... don't right. right you know and that's what's hard i mean look how many people gather for the wrongful death of you know not it's and, and it's it is to honor George Floyd and Breonna Thomas and, you know, Ahmoud who got shot by those two white men and, Mm -hmm. you know, just every other person who has been wrongfully, you know, killed for their race, you know, or even their sexual identity. Like, you know, I'm like this, to me, this is about everything. It's about black lives, Arab lives, you know, your sexual orientation. And this has been going on for so long. Like, what do you want to see at the end of all of this? Like, I know you went to the protest and there was a lot of people, but what do you think will be the tangible result of all of this, um, I don't know, this pushback, this rebellion? Like, what, is there laws that you want to see? Is there, what can we, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, what do we want yeah. to see? Yeah, 